Welcome everyone to CABA's quarterly CHC webinar meeting. My name is Marta Klopotowska and I am the Manager of Programs and Communications at CABA. I'll be emceeing the slides today. I'd like to mention that today's webinar meeting is being recorded and will be circulated for those who uh, were not able to attend. Uh, and with that, I'll pass it off to Craig to go over the agenda. Thanks, Marta. <clears throat> So first of all, it's, I'm Greg uh, from from CABA. Uh, we'll we'll first start off with a with a call to order, uh, welcome and introductions, and about the CHC uh, from from Charles, and uh, then we'll go from some administrative work, where we're looking at uh, approving the past minutes from the last meeting. There will be a call for uh, a, a new CHC chair. Uh, and a new vice chair and, and some vice chairs. And then there'll be a, a call for a, a new keynote uh, speaker at uh, in the November CHC meeting. Um, next, I'll, I'll give a brief update on some of the research projects that uh, I guess research project that we're working on right now for 2022 on uh, smart home energy management. Uh, Ken Wax will give an update next on uh, the, the capital white paper program. And uh, Marta will talk about uh, some the our new podcast series through the CHC, and then there'll be a, a keynote presentation from Daryl Friedman on human centric future of the smart of the connected home, and then there'll be some new business, uh, really things that we should be working on in the future, uh, new, new topics, new uh, new 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 events, things like that uh, that we should bring forward to the to the council and then some announcements of some past events and some future events in the industry and then uh, and then later an adjournment and uh, an, an announcement of the next uh, CHC meeting. Um, so so with that I'll, I'll I'll pass it off to uh, to Charles Hume. Uh, he's a, a vice chair of the CHC. So thank you very much Greg. So my name is Charles Hume. I'm with Southwire. I'm Director of Emerging Technologies, and I am uh, a Vice Chair for the Connected Home Council. So uh, those of you that may be new, uh, you can see the uh, description here. You know, the Connected Home Council were established in 2004, uh, initiates and reviews projects that relate to the connected home and multiple dwelling unit technologies and applications. We also examine industry opportunities that can accelerate the adoption of new technologies, consumer electronics and broadband services. Uh, within the burgeoning connected home market. So our webinars and selected research topics that we'll talk about today explore industry shaping trends and forces and the use of technology to make connected homes more flexible, adaptable, and human-centric, which is very uh, connected to our webinar that we're going to see today about the human-centric future of the connected home. So a few uh, administrative things before we get started. Uh, the link there on the slide is a motion to approve the past uh, CHC minutes. You can see the CHC minutes there. I would like to make a call to approve these minutes. Do we have anyone who will second that motion? I'm David Katz. I second the motion. I was on the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, David. And, and who are you with again? Sustainable Resources. Okay. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, hearing none opposed, the motion passes and the minutes are approved. So the next thing I was gonna do, uh, you might've noticed it was just my name as vice chair on the first slide there. That's because we are looking for a new chair for the CHC as well as vice chairs. And that's because our uh, former chair, Eric Carper of SNAP1, he stepped down from his role and that's because he took on a new role of vice chair of the Combo Board of Directors. As well, uh, I was joined as vice chair by Byron B. Miller of Semtech and Jim Hunter of Delos. They have stepped down as vice chairs. So uh, we all thank them sincerely for all their good work. Uh, we are currently looking for a new chair and vice chairs for the Connected Home Council. And if this is something that interests you, please uh, let us know. And Cabo will be happy to uh, contact you. The other thing we're looking for is a keynote speaker. So we have an upcoming November CHC webinar um, if you're interested, if you know someone who might have a good topic for a webinar, it's for a 20 to 30 minute keynote. Um, again, please let us know and we'll have Kaba contact you to further discuss. And with that, I will turn it over to Greg and he can uh, give an update on some of our research projects. Thanks, Charles. Um, 
So uh, early this year, we we, uh, we brought forward some topics uh, for to our uh, board of directors on a, a new connected home research project to do with uh, through the CHC, and uh, and it was uh, the smart home energy management or the connected home energy management was uh, was selected as the topic uh, to to go forward for this collaborative research project for this year. Um, since then, we put together an RFP. We got some bids in, and uh, and uh, Harbor Research was selected to conduct this research project, and uh, it, it's going to be looking at really all aspects of the uh, the smart home uh, energy management system and market um, barriers towards adoption, some significant industry trends, uh, focus on some. Uh, key inhibitors to the growth of the industry, some potential paths uh, moving forward to to enable more adoption of uh, of new technologies, and uh, and it'll be a, a combination of in depth inter interviews with subject matter experts and some consumer surveys. Um, so right now we have a, we have two confirmed funders. We have a, a few others that will be joining uh, shortly, uh, and uh, this project will will be $70,000 in total. And uh, there's different funding levels to join the project. Either uh, the two most common ones are, the most common one is the $10,000 level where they join the steering committee on the research and get an additional webinar for their organization. And then they get the full research. And then the the, the next level that's most common is a $5,000 level where they, uh, they would get the full research project and participate in a final webinar. Uh, only the funders get the, get the full research. Uh, and if you're interested in, in learning more about joining this collaborative research project, it's, a, it's definitely a cost-effective way to, to, to get large-scale research. And uh, it's definitely a good way to, to collaborate with other players in the space. We'll probably, we're anticipating uh, around uh, 10 funders at the end of the day uh, when, we're, when we're completed. So we haven't started the project just yet, but we're looking to get a few more funders and then, and then launch the project uh, shortly. Um, does anyone have any questions on this particular research? And if, if you're interested, definitely uh, uh, reach out to, to myself or anyone from CABA. You go walker at CABA.org and, uh, and I can set up a call and talk to you about a little, a little bit more detail. Well, Greg, this is David. Yeah. You think the uh, focus now is on net zero. So is that encompassing because we seem to have done this before, but you know, the focus now is how do we make net zero homes as well? Yeah, I think net zero is, is it plays a big uh, part in that, especially with some of the, the new regulations in the, in the West Coast of, in California. But I think uh, definitely net zero is, was, will be a component of this research project. Um, how much of a component will really depend on the steering committee, but it'll definitely be addressed in the, in the research project itself. It's one of those, uh, it's, it's definitely a hot topic in the connected home space right now. Well, just looking at the picture, they have two windmills and electric car and solar on the roof. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, we, we tried to fit it all in the one picture, right? Uh, uh, David. Uh, so, well, I don't know. We'll see it. We'll see how it goes. It can go in many different directions, but uh, the goal is to uh, we have really a 10,000 foot level right now. And then when we start with the research with the steering committee, the steering committee will really decide what the specific focus of the project would be and then who, who to survey, who to talk to, uh, um, what type of questions to ask to uh, to consumers. And then we bring it all together and in, uh, in, in, a, in a report and a presentation at the end. The reason I ask is because uh, Erie Scopic and I were looking at a DC home, you know, and so we'll we'll speak to those people and who might be interested. Yeah, we could always. Uh, I could always uh, when the project starts, we could always uh, pass your name on to the to the research firm, and they they could decide how to use that. Okay. Well, well, I guess I'll I'll pass it off to Ken Wax to give an update on our uh, the CHC uh, white paper program. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, this is Ken Wax. I'm the uh, chair of the CABA White Papers Committee for CHC and also for IBC. Uh, we have traditionally had up to four white papers uh, under development at the same time. Uh, these white papers are original papers proposed by members of CHC who uh, would like to address a topic. Uh, we have many topics that have been addressed, uh, such as uh, 
power over ethernet, uh, Li-Fi, which is a light-based technology as an alternative to Wi-Fi. Uh, and in some cases, we find that one topic will spawn two or three papers, uh, an introductory paper, um, or maybe a technology paper, maybe a market development paper. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have anything to report at this time about papers in progress. Um, this is a particular slow time for us, but uh, before the meeting began, uh, Marta and Greg and I agreed that we would be having a planning meeting uh, in preparation for uh, making a push towards getting more white paper authors. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to put forth an idea, as long as it's not uh, commercial to the point where you say, I have a great idea and I'm the inventor and this is the only solution in town. Uh, we really want to use the white paper as a way to explain, uh, uh, explain a business area or a technology to the CABA members. And you can certainly tell us what your company does uh, as one of the players. Um, Complementing the original white papers produced uh, by the White Papers Committee is the uh, Publications Review Committee that uh, I also chair. And we do uh, a survey of papers in published elsewhere, typically in trade press uh, or even marketing materials from companies, as long as some the information is relevant for the domain of the CABA membership, and it's not uh, pitching just one solution. Again, you can certainly promote your company's concept at the end of the paper, uh, as long as you don't say you're the only game in town. So, uh, please do take advantage of either submitting uh, an original paper idea to this committee or submitting a paper that you found that's relevant, uh, published elsewhere or even published by your own company. For outside papers, please contact Marta. Well, actually in all cases, contact Marta. She'll, she'll help you through the process and decide does it belong to CHC, does it belong to IBC or to the Publications Review Committee? Uh, so that's the news for now. Uh, we do have a very extensive library of uh, documents that have been published. So just look at kaba.org slash white papers. Thank you very much, Greg and Marta. Thanks so, thanks so much, Ken. and. Um... Just before we get to the keynote, we do have one uh, new item we, we'd like to bring up to um, our members here. Uh, so we recently uh, began a podcast series on intelligent buildings and connected homes. Um, these podcasts are pre-recorded discussions um, between leading industry experts, and we are going to be releasing them on Spotify and Apple podcasts um, quarterly. Um, the first recording on intelligent buildings was released in July, and we will be uh, planning to release our second recording on uh, connected homes uh, in October. And um, before we uh, go into the topic of that podcast, um, uh, we, you can actually find the link to the recordings on our website. And lastly, just before uh, we, we continue on, we are looking for hosts and guests uh, for future podcasts. So if you are interested in participating, um, you can contact myself, um, you can contact uh, Kaba and uh, just let us know of your interest. We can let you know all the details and, and discuss further. Um, now, just going back to the uh, podcast that will be released in October, it actually does feature uh, Ken Wax um, and Bob Allen of uh, NAFCO um, and on the topic of uh, extending the smart grid to consumers. Um, Ken, if you you have a minute or so just to give a brief summary of that podcast before we continue on to our keynote today. Uh, thanks, Marta. I'll do my best to give a, a, a shall we say, a teaser uh, without uh, launching into uh, a, a podcast because I could easily do this for the next hour. Uh, energy management has traditionally been 
uh, something that was exciting uh, from what I hear historically in the 1930s as grids were being developed and electric and the country, uh, both Canada and the US were being electrified uh, and until the, in the early 1930s, there were huge swaths of the North America that simply did not have electric power. Uh, in the United States, the National Rural Electric uh, Program brought electricity to the hinterland uh, to the point where now, of course, electricity is uh, available everywhere. However, uh, we've grown quite accustomed to have electricity plentiful and available as much as anyone needs. Uh, but a lot of people are getting concerned about future developments and about the effect of electricity generation and the impact on climate change and with the greenhouse gas emissions. So there are many programs in both the US and Canada to explore the feasibility and practicability of distributed energy resources, namely solar uh, panels, uh, wind turbines and storage. Uh, these have been moving from uh, experimental to uh, mainstream and these pose serious challenges to the distribution of electricity because as you know, the output of wind and solar depends a lot on weather and on time of day and on season. So we have to be prepared to adjust our usage of electricity according to the availability of electricity. Uh, certainly as storage proliferates, it'll help the situation. So in a nutshell, we are moving from what we might call a utility centric grid to a consumer centric grid because a lot of the generation and storage occurs on customer premises, be it a, a residence, an apartment building, or an office complex, or an industrial park. So uh, we are looking, we are exploring the areas of distributed energy resources, of microgrids, of maintaining grid balance, of creating networks of microgrids, of uh, aggregators, um, and there's still a role for utilities, but utilities now have a much broader field in which they'll be uh, applying their trade. And uh, they may actually face some competition from microgrids. So consider that a teaser for the podcast. Excellent, thanks so much, Ken. And um, I will pass it on now to Greg to introduce our keynote for today. Thanks, Marta. This is uh, our, our keynote today is uh, Dale Freeman. He's the, the global president and CEO of uh, Cedia. Uh, for those that aren't aware, uh, Cedia is the Consumer Electronics Design and Installation Association. Uh, There's a, a global membership based association that serves connected home technology industry through advocacy, uh, connection, and, and education. Um, prior to joining Cedia, uh, uh, Daryl has spent uh, more than 30 years in the non-for-profit uh, leadership roles, overseeing membership, advocacy, industry relations, and uh, and and previously was through it. It was part of a 25,000 member recording academy association. So um, this presentation will really look at uh, the the human the the human centric future of the connected home. It'll address some of the the new emerging technologies and uh, and the importance of uh, uh, presence, comfort, safety, health, and sustainability. And uh, he'll address topics of uh, of new product categories as well as uh, societal, economic, and industry trends. Uh, and uh, as a role as as the in, as an integrator. Um, so. I think I'll with, with with that I'll just pass it off to to, to Daryl and there's a few other members of the the, the CD team that will be uh, giving this presentation and uh, and this, all this information will be recorded and we'll put the slide deck on uh, on the CABA website at CABA.org slash chc and uh, we'll be sharing uh, contact information of the speakers along with the the meeting minutes for those that uh, that have, have attended and those that are on the connected home count. 
So with that, I'll pass it off to, to Daryl and the Cedia team. Thank you so much, Greg, for that nice introduction. And thank you everybody for joining today. I'm looking forward to, um, to sharing uh, some of Cedia's information with you all. And uh, I just wanna, um, again, thank Marta and everybody at Kava for the invitation to be part of this and with the Connected Home Council. Looking forward to meeting many of you at CD Expo and working with you in the coming years. Um, I do wanna acknowledge a couple of my team members who are on the call who did a lot of work on the data that we're going to be exploring today. Um, Giles Sutton, our Senior Vice President, who's joining us, as well as Walt Zerbe, who's our Senior Director of Technology and Standards. I wanna thank them for all the work they've done. And also want to recognize one of our board members who's with us today, Amanda Wildman, who's a great supporter of Cedia as well. So thank you all. And I'm looking forward to sharing this information with you. Um, Greg gave you a little bit of my background. I'm Daryl Friedman. I'm a global president of C and CEO. You cannot see me, but you've seen a picture of me in the previous slide. And um, all you have to do is just use Photoshop, add a little bit of gray, and then you've got a good picture of how I look now. But hopefully you'll, you'll see me in person if you're coming to CDA Expo and we can uh, share some, some information with each other. So again, thank you. So what we're gonna talk about today is this concept of the human-centric future of the connected home. And if you can go to the next slide, Marta, we'll begin with um, this concept of uh, just introducing CDA. I know many of you are CDA members, many of you are uh, aware of CDA, but some of you may not be. And also we're kind of redefining our own mission a little bit. So I just wanna explain a little bit about who we are. CDA is a global membership association and we serve strictly the home technology industry through advocacy, connection, and education. Those are our pillars. And on the next slide, we can look at some of the uh, specifics of those pillars. For advocacy in general, what we mean is we wanna champion the industry. We are the largest and only international association for this sector and we want to be its champion and shout about it on the mountain from the mountaintops about what the work we do. So part of that includes fighting for the rights of our members in governmental bodies. Um, there's a lot of regulation happening today, especially in states um, where uh, sectors are trying to limit what integrators can do. We have an advocacy team that works on that year round in all 50 states in the USA as well as other territories around the world. And we want to serve as the ambassadors of the home technology industry to adjacent industries, as well as to consumers. We want to increase the consumer awareness of what the integrator does. And we'll talk more about that in this presentation. And finally, we want to champion those who use their technical talents to improve the human condition at home. That's our advocacy work. In terms of connection, we are a gathering point. We want to gather people, professionals online and in person. And in about one month, we'll be doing that in a big way at CDA Expo. So if you're not already registered, I encourage you to go and, and join us at that uh, major conference. We also celebrate um, the, the work of our members through prestigious awards, and we connect businesses with integrators and create a pipeline for workforce. And finally, education is a key component of CDA. Uh, we create training standards. We have two uh, internationally globally recognized certifications. And we develop the content to share knowledge and promote best practices and also conduct research, which is what we'll be talking about today, as well as thought leadership, which is also part of today's presentation. So on the next slide, um, who we serve specifically is the residential integration community. Um, this is not about uh, DIY products. This is really about integrated solution providers. And it's really for the residential sector. So a little differentiated from the larger Consumer Electronics Association, we're really focused on this sector that the, um, the, the council is focused on, which is that residence. We work to design and create holistic technology solutions to improve life at home and specialize in creating unique personalized experiencing, personalized experiences. And we'll talk more about that personalization in this presentation. On the next slide um, really is sort of how I wanna focus this talk today on research and thought leadership. The research piece is really our integrated home market analysis. We developed data uh, based on 2021 data of our marketplace. And the thought leadership piece is the integrator of 2027, what we're working ahead for. So essentially you can think of today's presentation as where we are and where we're headed. Where we are is this market research project that was undertaken with Anchorage Consulting, uh, affiliated with Butler University. And that's about the size, scope, and segmentation and brand rankings within the uh, US, particularly for this presentation, but also the UK 
residential integrated markets. Um, but where we're headed is also very interesting. And this is really the focus of a white paper that was created by CDS Technology Advisory Council. And I just want to mention a couple of the um, key authors of that piece. In addition to Walt Zerby, who I also already mentioned, um, on the CDS staff, we have um, oh, David Meyer, as well as our incredible volunteers, Gordon Van Zyden and Peter Aylett. And so much of the work is really done by the people in the industry who serve and give their time to CDS. So I want to thank those authors. So today we're going to talk about where we are and where we're headed. So next slide, please. Now, no one's going to grow by refusing to change. And the integrated market home market is on track to meet some incredible bullish projections, really, because this market is evolving. In terms of where we are, we believe the uh, residential market, the custom integration markets, $20 billion market. In the US, approximately 11,000 integration companies. And the annual revenue, of, uh, about average annual revenue, about 2.2 million, with an average project size of $26,000. That was one of the key uh, surprises in the data for, for me. And in terms of where we're headed, we're integrating technology into the built environment to, the, to improve the human condition. So I'm gonna speak a lot about this white paper's view of the human-centric home and the human condition. It really shifts the model from selling products to selling an experience and a process. And it's the beginning of what we're calling the hyper-personalized experiences in the home. And it focuses on contributing to the improvements in the human condition. So the next slide will begin the section on uh, what is the human-centric home? And we'll talk about sort of what that means to us and how it has impacts on your businesses. So the following slide is really the crux of this uh, IO27, which I'll call the Integrator 2027, IO27. The IO27 will need to be proficient in a broad range of technology applications for individualized and intuitive user experiences. Now, this is a little bit different than some of the other any greater of year, name your year that we've done in the past. We've done this, um, these five-year outlooks in Cedia uh, for a few uh, terms now. And the previous integrator of year, we're really focused on the technologies, the technologies that Cedia I believe would be seeing in five years. And we realized that the technology is a tool and it shouldn't be the focus. So these, these experts on the technology council really said, let's, let's look at this as technology. They're evolutionary, not revolutionary, but the focus needs to be on the end user. And with the technology being out of sight and out of mind as much as possible. And there's really been too much focus on technology and not enough focus on the humans that are using that technology. So moving on to the next slide, just to give you a glimpse of what the integrated home market segmentation found in terms of product categories, here we see the diversity of technologies current integrators must specialize in. Already they are required to diversify their offerings across the entire home. And indeed their true differentiating value is that ability to integrate these systems. Um, one sector I'll just call out is lighting control and shading, which has significant growth. Um, the 2021 numbers here you see are 12%. In the previous study it was 2%. And this is an area that integrators have highlighted as a, a rapid area for growth in 2022. On the next slide, we'll see um, some of the trends that are driving a need for the integrated systems. And these are some of the key topics that were addressed in the IO27 white paper. Um, these are large subjects, ones that weigh heavily on the day-to-day -day lives of all the stakeholders. So I'll just list them. Interoperability is, is one. Today, customers have to look for this works with sign that's not going to not going to be tolerated forever people are going to want to expect everything to work together seamlessly multifunctional spaces as we've reinvented and reevaluated the use of our home and our lives spaces must adapt to those multiple uses content fragmentation as it's getting so hard for the consumer to sift through the the universe of content um, they're going to be looking to us to to reduce that frustration in this difficult to navigate landscape There'll be a lot of information about content fragmentation at CDA Expo. Our keynote speaker is going to be discussing this particular topic, which I think will be a great uh, interest to owners of integration companies. Another trend is connectivity in smart cities. Um, exponentially growing number of IoT devices expected to function in any environment. And what the paper is calling active assisted living, inclusive design practices for resident care, allowing people to live more independently, 
And this is not just about uh, seniors or the elderly. This is about anybody with a need that technology can solve in terms of their own physical abilities. Next slide, please. So some of the interesting pullout quotes from the voice of the integrator was this need to evolve from the kind of selling that integration companies are doing today to the kind of selling that will be more profitable, more impactful to, for the homeowner, and uh, really we think is the future. If you look at that top quote, the integrator says, I have found that DIY products have taken over a lot of the smaller integration projects that's impacting income for smaller companies. And at that lower right, you see whole home control systems and smart systems will continue to increase in demand. And the key here, I think, is if we continue to focus on selling products, we're just pitting ourselves in a losing battle against really some of the largest technology companies in the world who are selling direct to consumer products. The, the margins are small. The, the, the increase in direct to consumer selling is, is only going up. But what we can sell and what they can't is the expertise, this expertise in creating a holistic experience that combine multiple technologies into a useful environment for the homeowner. So this is really the challenge, the need to evolve. And in terms of how we solve that challenge, we'll ask to go to the next slide, please. So focusing on the user is really one of the key messages of the IO27 paper. Now, most integrators probably think that they're focusing on the end user already, and they may not realize the importance of utilizing a different type of thinking, just some sort of design thinking and a much larger discovery process if they're using one at all. Hyper-personalization is what all humans want. We are all unique and we wanna be treated as such. There are many challenges in creating systems that are hyper-personalized for each user in the residence. So what we provide is this focus on the user uncovering their profound hidden needs, maybe what they don't necessarily tell you upfront, and what their user really needs and why, determining a plan for how those needs can be met and leveraging the available technologies to execute that plan. And hyper-personalization, the paper defines as creating unique experiences for every individual user and use case. And it's achieved by creating custom and targeted experience using data analytics, AI and automation. So in the next section, the next slide, uh, we'll begin this concept that's really one of the main focuses of the paper. It's really about the human condition. And in the end, it's about humans and improving their lives. So the next slide will show you what we consider to be the five tenets of the human condition that relate to this particular paper. And these five tenets create an opportunity for you to forge a much more valued relationship with your customers. Selling technology does not create that sort of close connection. It's selling presence, security, et cetera. Selling those feelings is what really creates that connection. And those five tenants, which we'll go through each in each one, are presence, comfort, health, safety, and sustainability. So if we go to the next slide, we'll talk about present. Uh, next slide, we'll talk about presence, which could be, among other things, a space for meditation, um, consuming media, connecting remotely with friends or loved ones, and collaborating with colleagues and having access to a wealth of information. These are all about being present in the moment. And that's a, that's a, um, a feeling that the integrator can, can talk about with the homeowner as opposed to just the products that, that address these feelings. The next slide is um, about comfort, being physically comfortable in the moment. And that of course is temperature and air quality, but also sound, you know, quiet. Um, intuitive controls that uh, make life very easy and they're, they're not um, intrusive in any way. And the next slide will go to the other tenant, which is health, a healthy state of being. And that can be bioadaptive lighting, training environments and simulators in the home, health monitoring system, and reducing stress and promoting sleep. And the next uh, tenant is safety being safe and secure in your home. And that can be the traditional uh, definitions of safety, permanent alarm systems and CCTV, but also network security, making sure your network is safe and really accessibility technologies, granting independence and dignity. And this again uh, is referred to in the paper as active assisted living. It means you know, if, if for senior citizens, for someone who's disabled, for someone who has another special need, 
the home should be able to adapt to their needs and make their lives uh, very independent and lives with dignity. And finally, sustainability. Um, our duty to, to future generations. This includes energy management, product materials and packaging, and product life, uh, life cycle. So if you look at the next slide, we kind of divided these up into the technologies that correspond to each of these tenants. And these are the technologies that integrators are already using. These are in the homes, these are being put in the homes. It's just a way of thinking about them differently, how you talk to the customer, how you talk to the homeowner, how you talk to the humans about these technologies in the context of the feelings they create. And not just saying, here's my home theater package, here's my uh, security package, but really kind of looking at it from the standpoint of these five tenants. Presence really is about the home theater, the media rooms, the collaboration systems. Comfort can be about, among other things, um, the control system, the HVAC, acoustic treatment, health, the gym, the home gym, the simulators, and bioadaptive lighting. Safety is really a feeling that can be solved by security systems, automation, CCTV, and sustainability. Important to your customers. It was also mentioned earlier in this meeting today how important this is, and that's power managers, HVAC control, recycling programs, et cetera. But one point on the next slide is that these really all interrelate. There's no single device solution for any tenant of the human condition. Tenants may be codependent, for example, you can't be present or comfortable without being safe. So they all interrelate to each other, but each tenant has a unique meeting and priority for each customer. So the main tenants relate to one another, are circular in nature, and these should not be considered siloed. It's also important to illustrate that all of these tenants should be addressed to some degree. And more, in, more emphasis might be put on particular tenants based on those conversations that the integrator has with the homeowner. So the next section we'll go to the human centric design really takes this and, and turns it into how does this operate into the design and engineering process. So the next slide is really an important one. I think when, as I've been talking to many integrators around the country, um, what often happens in these meetings with the customer is that the conversation begins with that, that lower right hand uh, arrow, the green arrows, um, which is the what. What do you want? Here are the packages I sell, here are the products in my portfolio. And what we're suggesting with this paper is that we want to start with the why. If you're a uh, start with why fan, a Simon Sinek fan, you understand this concept. But really, it's starting with the why, building empathy with the customers, discovering their stated and hidden needs uh, to ascertain desired user experiences, and then moving to the design phase, designing the user experience using a holistic, user centric approach, asking the right questions, then finally, engineering and then finally to specification. And in current practice, questions are being asked during the customer interview, but oftentimes the integrators are going on to uh, very competently answer the wrong questions. Asking what a customer uh, wants is effectively having them design their own system instead of the integrator designing it based on the customer's discovered needs. So for example, if the integrator is asking questions like, do you like to entertain? Do you like to cook? Where do you hang out most when you're entertaining? And do you like to listen to music? Do you like to have conversation in that room? And then you're gonna discover through that conversation, the answers from the consumer. They might say, yeah, we like to entertain and we, you know, we love to cook. And actually, usually everyone just hangs out in the kitchen. That's where we kind of start our parties and while we're cooking and yeah, we'd love to have music in there, but we also wanna have conversation. As you have that conversation with the user, you're gonna discover things that the user may not have just told you if you asked them, what products do you want? The integrator might say, okay, we need high CRI lighting to see the food color temperature and accurately with even distribution. And we need to pay attention to the acoustics in the room because the kitchen is not just a place where you're gonna be cooking. It's a place where we need to hear conversation and keep speech at an intelligible level and keep the volume down. Um, that means when you're gonna have music in the kitchen, how is that gonna interplay with the acoustics, making sure that people can hear each other and understand uh, the conversations. And then the lighting needs to be adaptive in the kitchen because you're going to want to have conversation in there while you're cooking and then immediately move into a more mood focused uh, lighting system. So traditionally integrators have been solutions providing providers formulating specific specifications and programming to make things work. And what this paper is suggesting is that the user experience really shifts the focus from the product or technology to the user and the goal to achieve their sense of presence, comfort, health, safety, 
and sustainability. The next slide um, really is a few more of these questions that are maybe not um, intuitive for an integration company to ask a customer, but we believe these are really central kind of questions that begin dialogue and open up some of the, the hidden desires the consumer may have. Do the rooms uh, spaces give you a sense of truly being at home, feeling a, a sense of nesting? Can you feel a sense of peace and harmony in all the rooms when there's nothing going on? But is, are they quiet and comfortable when everything else stops? What would make you feel comfortable about your home when you're away from it? Is this your forever home? So talking to the customers is a, is a holistic discovery process and it's a very personal thing. Each customer will be different. We need to ask the questions about not what devices or systems the user wants, but questions that teach us about their lives. We want our customers to open up about their preferences, daily routines, pastimes, and interactions. Because the questions are so personal, they will, they will differ for every integrator and every customer. They have to be questions you're comfortable asking and your customer is comfortable answering. So for a few examples, just to illustrate this kind of questioning versus what may be the more traditional approach. So instead of asking, what kind of finishes do you like? If you ask a question like, do the room spaces give you a sense of being truly at home? This can lead to conversation about aesthetics and textures and familiarity. Where in the past integrators might have said, do you want acoustic treatments? Asking, can you feel a sense of peace and harmony in all the rooms when there's nothing going on? That is, are they quiet and comfortable when everything else stops? This sets a baseline, particularly for things like ambience, lighting and acoustics. It will explore whether you have you know, uh, people with sensory needs in your family that need to have quiet spaces. It opens up those kinds of conversations. In the past, we might have asked, do you need a security system? But instead asking what would make you feel more, most comfortable about your home when you're away from it? You may discover a need to remotely control devices and appliances or keep an eye on kids or pets in addition to the traditional security concerns. And encouraging clients to think long-term, if they plan to stay in a house for a long time, that could lead to a conversation about adaptive technologies. If not, you might discuss systems that increase a home's resale value or curb appeal. So the answers to traditional yes or no questions, like, do you want a security system? They give you a very limited understanding of the client's true needs. These open-ended questions invite responses that will help you uncover truths that even the client may not have previously known truths that will lead them to enjoy their homes more and value the integrator service as essential to their well-being. So the next section is really going to be about uh, the final section, really about partnering intelligently. And if you go to the next slide, um, what we're suggesting, really the conclusion of this is the right partner for a human-centric experience. Um, the human-centric home requires diverse expertise. You need someone trained to do this. We believe CD members can support every step of this process from discovery through engineering, installation through service and support. And as we expand CDS reach into other adjacent trades and homeowners, we're gonna help the consumer understand that the CDM member does provide this expertise. And now we have two globally accredited um, certifications. So the CIT and IST certification holders can be trusted to build any system with reliability. And people, consumers or anyone looking for an integrator can find them at the CEDIA website, which is CEDIA.net, and you'll find the Find CEDIA Integrator uh, link at the top of that page. So finally, I uh, just wanted to uh, let you know if you want to learn more about CEDIA or any about this uh, information, the next slide has some links and uh, quotes, I think, around the Learn More slide. Great. So the Integrator 2027 white paper, um, you can download that for free at cedia.net slash io27. Also encourage you to listen to the CEDIA podcast, a regular feature that's available on all of your uh, podcast platforms. And um, please come join us at the CEDIA Expo, September 28th to October 1st in Dallas, where you'll see the latest home technologies and also some of the, um, the approach uh, in our classes that you're seeing uh, from this presentation. And finally, learning more about CEDIA, net, uh, CEDIA at CEDIA.net, um, you know, please visit our website when you get a chance. And the next slide is just my information. So I want to thank you. First of all, thank you for your, the invitation again today. Thank you for your time and listening to this presentation and kind of helping us uh, explain to the world and passing on to the world the, the need for this shift and focus to the human-centric condition. And feel free to reach out to me. My email is here, very easy, ceo at cd.org. 
www.cdc.net is our website, and you can find me on Twitter at Daryl P. Friedman. So with that, I'll conclude. And just again, thank you everybody for your attention today. And thank you to Kaba for this invitation to speak with you. Thanks, thanks a lot, Daryl. Um, does anyone have any uh, uh, questions for, for Daryl or the CDA team? If so, uh, you can uh, state them now, state your name and, and your organization, or you can put them in the in the chat box or the Q&A section, uh, or you can just uh, address them uh, verbally right now. Hey, this is uh, Walt. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. There was a question from Jason about um, what role do you see standards like threat and matter playing? Um, those are huge and very important. Um, while control companies will still have their own control uh, that will take systems down to the nth degree, uh, we recently did a podcast with with a bunch of them that will that still embrace and actually are involved in the development of matter. So there'll be core functionality that they will uh, also support from matter and things like that. So um, they're they're yet another one of the tools that Daryl was speaking about that will help. Um, with the integration of everything and then help get tech out of the way and help things move hopefully more seamlessly together. So they're, they're definitely important and embraced and we're, we're, we're waiting for them. I like to say MIDI was really, was one of those early things um, and musical instrument digital interface worked great. It still works great and it worked across all brands and that's, we need more of that. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it's Jason here. So, so I, I'm I'm from Comscope, you know. So we're we're a device manufacturer, um, consumer facing, but delivering products and services through operators fundamentally. Um, and we're seeing this as being a in terms of the kind of heat map for technology trends. You know, re reading out through say the next five years. There, there's definitely a shift more towards obviously you know fiber access moving from gigabit to 10 gigabit and ultra broadband that's a critical driver for operators but then the evolution of the home environment as well so looking at you know what does wi-fi 7 bring what do voice assistants bring um how much more can we can we be doing in terms of providing real-time um, capabilities on the network edge, so edge compute and machine learning and things like that. So the, the, that's the driver for my question, you know, because um, from an operator and from a sort of consumer proposition point of view, these are um, definitely sort of um, high up on the list, I would say, from uh, from a point of view of a technology focus. Yeah, I'll, everything you said is, is extremely important. Edge computing, uh, less reliance mm. on the cloud or more distribution yeah. is is great. 100% um, agree with that as, as well as more smarts in the home. So when the cloud does go down, mm -hmm. you don't lose all your functionality. Uh, and of exactly. course, and of course, low latency as we need to make yes. quick decisions, which 5G and, and the edge stuff will do all very important part of the equations. Yeah. Thank you for that. Man. Thank you for the feedback. I have a question from, from the, <laughs> The building envelope is so critical. The systems in the building is in addition to the media and the exchange, but things like when is you when is your air filter have to change? Um, also, your windows that are you know with with condensation and mold that people don't realize. So, how do we bring those things together into this very technical um, approach? Um, I can answer that. Yes, that's all part of the wellness side of this, the 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 system support side of this. That's where all the different types of communication protocols need to be gathered together. So when you do get a filter reminder, it shows up somewhere useful. Uh, one of the things Daryl touched on is typically the UI has been a mess and uh, the best UI is no UI, but we do need some UI. So um integrating that in the most seamless manner is is a high priority so someone that someone doesn't have to get down to the granular level of needing to look at all the systems see where they are see what needs attention see uh, see what might not be uh, doing so well in the residence that's all part of this equation and should all be part of the discovery process to design a holistic system that 
that is easy to manage and, and easy to use. And I think uh, Elizabeth from Elizabeth uh, from Parks Associates has a couple questions on really some insights on uh, the growth of CD integrators, and then some uh, another question on uh, DIY solutions. If uh, Elizabeth, if you want to uh, provide some more granularity there, I'll be happy to answer the DIY one. Um, it's interesting. We've always been involved in DIY, even though. Every year, it seems like DIY becomes a new thing. It isn't. We've we've always been integrating TVs and and VCRs and and you know CD players and DVD players. Um, there there has always been a mix of custom products and uh, consumer products. Um, whenever something turns out to be a threat, the MP3 player was considered a threat. Uh, it ends up not being a threat. Uh, it just means that people have to morph their businesses, uh, decide how they're going to embrace all technology, marry it all together. And in the end, it ends up about design, about a holistic system that was supplied to somebody. And and these are all all these all these DIY pieces end up being tools in the end that need to be uh, prescribed and carefully crafted together. And that's really the key. Um, somebody can go and buy stuff and put it in themselves but it might work intermittently because they don't have the network and everything else together, or they don't know that this thing works so well with that thing. And um, so they're, they're all tools. They shouldn't be seen as threats. It just means there needs to be a mindset change for a holistic system. Hey, this is Elizabeth. Um, I figured out how to unmute myself. So hopefully y'all can hear me okay. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks for answering that questions. Um, yeah, I was just uh, curious whether like on the show floor, even next month, you know, will we see DIY on the floor? Um, I, Daryl and Giles, I don't have all the exhibitors committed to my gray matter right now. Uh, I'm sure we will see some companies that could be considered DIY. I know Google is, is a good contributor to Cedia um, and, and yeah, their voice really, control I products. Yeah, Elizabeth, I think you, you will see a mix. Um, there, you know, some consumer brands are on the show floor. And I think, you know, for, for us, from the standpoint of the CDA Association, which doesn't uh, actually manage the CDA Expo, um, we're really focused on this idea of the integrator and how it, even if there are DIY products in the home, we want to make sure that the consumer has a seamless uh, experience. So it's not just about plugging it in and having 10 different apps or, you know, three different remote controls. So even if CDA Expo is showing some DIY products, um, the focus for the association is really on the, the integrated system, their integrated home system. And in, in terms of your other question, Elizabeth, about growth areas, I mean, consistently we're, all of our data and all of our conversations are really pointing to lighting and shading as the big growth opportunity, but we're also hearing about, um, you know, the sort of uh, active adapt as assisted living as the population gets older, as people, um, you know, have, have health issues. Uh, at any age, really, that this sort of thing is going to be critical. And Giles, I think you had um, some other comments on growth areas or perhaps another question you wanted to answer. I was just going to mention on the show floor um, that we, you know, there are other brands, for example, that have quite a diverse product portfolio, like Lutron, for example, that will sell through, you know, through Lowe's, Home Depot, but also, you know, will sell to more of the traditional integrators. So have quite a diverse product portfolio there as well as other brands like Google and Sonos that were mentioned. Okay, great, thank you. Just adding to that, I think another important aspect is, is remote manageability. You know, so obviously you've got, we do a lot of work with operators on enabling things like USP, you know, as a broadband forum standard, but we're seeing a sort of an uptick in terms of that ability to incorporate standard space technologies that are manufacturer agnostic such that they can then be you can you can have a sort of premium service effectively so you might have a whole diverse mix of products in your home but it's that ability to then for example you know if you're if you're an elderly person or you need extra help or you're just not technology savvy that you can basically have that managed that 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 your environment can be um incorporated in a in a, in a wider um, umbrella of management 
And, and today, most of that management centers around the, the devices that an operator provides, right? So you connect to the internet, you, your internet provider provides you with a router or a modem um, and probably a Wi-Fi product. But now, because of those enabling technologies like, like Matter, you then have the kind of basic framework and communication framework to then be able to extend that manageability in a device agnostic manner. And that that's a really interesting area that that is it's it's that ability to onboard new new verticals and expand services offerings that an, that an operator can um, to, can use to sort of extend their value proposition fundamentally. But yeah, it's a very interesting area, in particular USP. I would say you know TR three sixty nine. Yes, and to answer Bruce Clark's question, and that kind of ties into the verticals. Um, Bruce asked about CI professionals needing to handle the integration of the broad of these systems uh, with other adjacent trades. That is 100% part of the equation. The integrator of 2027 needs to embrace the designer, the architect, the builder, um, the HVAC companies, and all the other uh, adjacent trades to pull off um, this holistic system that needs to be put together. And that is very much part of it. And uh, almost like the uh, uh, a technical concierge service, there needs to be someone in the middle that can put all this stuff together um, from, from a uh, usability side and from a system side. And that is a perfect role for the integrator. Um, this is Elizabeth again. Are there any general comments on how challenging this is for the integrator to bring in, you know, different ecosystems all in one? Do you do you all feel like there's a good solution out there right now for the integrator to to enable that to happen? Go ahead, Giles. Oh, go ahead, Giles. Yeah. Or Walt. Okay, I can go. Um, a lot of this stuff happens. So an integrator doesn't pick a product off a shelf and for the first time stick it in somebody's house and sees what it does. Uh, some people do that, but uh, they might have a relationship with a client to say, look, we're going to try this out, but you know, keep in mind, we're going to try this out. So you're an experiment. We're, we're, we're going to work on this together and we're going to, cause you wanted this and we're going to see how it goes. The other side is they they get familiar with the products, they know how things work, and they're one of that's one of their jobs is to figure out how A works with B so that they can get reliable systems and solutions together that uh, that do make A and B work well together. So that's kind of part of the art of this right now. When we get things like matter uh, out into the world and functioning, that will ease a lot of this. Uh, but that has been one of the uh, one of the major art forms of a CDA integrator is being able to do that and and having it be done so it's reliable. Hi, this is Steve Habeisen from uh, Mecco Shade. Actually, I, I think that's one of the bigger challenges managing that experience, you know, across the industry. Right? It's <laughs> uh, and that's where this uh, I put a question in the chat, which was really about how certifications you think will evolve for the integrator to help support implementing this and really managing that expectation. Yeah. So CD is heavily involved in certifications. We just got, um, we do have ANSI accreditation for our standards creation. Um, and we do now have ANSI accreditation for two of our certifications. Workforce is an issue as well. I think that's an issue everyone knows across all trades is an issue. Right. So we're also involved in um, workforce development. Uh, we are engaging with trade schools. We do have two certifications that are ANSI accredited for, um, for electronic technicians. Uh, one is on the cabling side and then one is on the interfacing side. But there's lots to be done there. And we're, we're heavily involved in education, certification and standards because exactly what you said, that's uh, we need repeatable experiences. We need a we need a, a work work group that has the same fundamentals, and we're working very hard on that part of the equation. Yeah, yeah that's, Bruce, that's a that's a great question. By the way, I really I, I think it's really important for Cedia to do that. Obviously, these are on on different timing tracks. The certifications, you know, we're really focused on this accreditation being globally recognized. But you're right that that does as as these continually evolve, and we have 
you know, a certification commission that's experts in the field who continually look at this. And uh, this is always an evolving process, but you're right, the, the IO27 approach should be in, woven into every, every piece of education that we do to make sure that the integrators understand this is, this is how to get them to be a more successful business. Great question. Yeah. I also think, you know, uh, and thank you, by the way, the, um, I also think that it's important as a manufacturer that we're, that we can be woven into that too. So we can help support that, that, uh, I guess, journey <laughs> in terms of making that happen. Right. I'll be calling you. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I look forward to it. Actually. It's, it's a challenge for us all. It really is. It's um, something we all have to attack together. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it looks like we're I'd just, a, the, sorry, I just want to add that, I mean, as part, part of the challenge I think that's faced today at, at any level is, is that it's overcoming the interoperability um, challenges, right? So a lot of these um, systems have, have evolved over time in, in their own closed wall ecosystems. So when you look at things like Zigbee and Z-Wave, right, they kind of fulfilled their um, uh, purpose to an extent but I think now moving forwards if you look to the future if you look certainly through the next five years if you look at things like Wi-Fi 7 and, and Matter they provide that transparency they provide that ability to then start looking towards um, frictionless onboarding right effectively such that you know you can ecosystems can coexist with a, a, a far more clearly defined underlying ecosystem um, that should enable integrators and, and um, you know, professionals that are doing these sort of custom installs and, and, and even DIYs to be able to do that with a level of confidence that hasn't existed in the past. Well, it looks like we're, we're just about out of time for this section, um, but I'd like to thank uh, the Daryl, Walt, Giles uh, from, from CDF for the great presentation. Uh, definitely at least, at least one of you uh, stick, stick around for uh, the, the event section. Maybe you can say a few words about the, uh, the upcoming CD event in, in uh, the next couple slides. Thanks a lot. And uh, for everyone, the slides will be there uh, available and the recording will be available on the website and uh, we'll be sharing out the minutes with the contact information of the, of the speakers. Uh, so if you want to reach out to them directly. Thanks. So we just have uh, just a, a couple more slides, uh, and then we're then we'll, then we'll be ready to adjourn. But uh, this is uh, for new business. If, if there's anyone who's interested in uh, in having a keynote presentation at the the November CHC meeting, uh, anybody has any interest in in white papers, or are there any other new business that you think that the CHC should be uh, be aware of, or be be promoting, or being being involved in? So I'll. I'll I'll open up the floor and if there's see if there's any uh, any comments there. Uh, this is David again. I'll just say the um, federal government here in Canada has just issued a proposal for what are the technologies for those uh, net zero homes, and so maybe we can find some uh, connection to that and create some uh, membership involvement in that. Yeah, that's a that'd be a, that'd be a great topic. I know we we've we've done a couple projects with that in, in net zero buildings, but I think even homes is a little bit uh, a little bit even easier a proposal. Maybe uh, a white, maybe a white paper or something like that. They're, they're, we could get some people involved. Their focus is on the energy portion, and I have to say that all the connectivity is great, but somebody connecting to an HVAC system has to understand what HVAC does. Somebody who connects a humidity sensor to somebody's cell phone has to understand what is humidity and what is good indoor air quality. So I think that's a part of the certification should be more than just can I connect things, but am I connecting it for the usefulness of that party, of that human-centric person? Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, certainly from a device manufacturer perspective, I mean, talking for on behalf of Comscope, I mean, we we've done a quite a lot of work with some of the bigger operators. I mean, I think I think towards sort of Orange and Liberty Global, you know, looking at um, the manufacturing process, right? So you you know, removal of um, single-use plastics using um, post-consumer plastics in um, um, mechanical manufacturing and, and as you say, the energy footprint of devices, but also the 
repairability, serviceability, and the, the, the whole life cycle management of products as well. So we, we certainly have a, a very strong and sort of broad breadth of information that's relative to operators and um, the, you know, product design and product manufacturing that, that may be of interest, you know, in that, in that area, as it's, it is a, you know, globally, it's a hot topic now, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason, I'll, I'll reach out to you after the call and uh, maybe we can see about different ways to, to engage. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess I'll go to the next uh, slide here. Marta, if you could just uh, fast forward the slides. Uh, I guess uh, if Elizabeth is still here, we I think we added a couple of those uh, Parks Associate events, uh, some virtual events, and maybe you want to say a few words about uh, about those, and then we'll go back to the CD folks. Uh, maybe they, they can uh, provide uh, some more information on uh, the upcoming CD Expo. So uh, Elizabeth, if, if you're still there. Sure. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for, for adding Parks' uh, events here. So our connections in person we held in May and we have uh, the state of the home security market in, coming up this week and then two other sessions. If anybody would like a guest pass or a VIP pass, you're welcome to reach out to me at eParks at parksassociates.com. We also have our Connected Health Summit. We're maintaining the health event this year virtually. And so some back-to-back -back sessions in August and then the October uh, focus really on that independent living. So would love to have anybody join us if interested. Thanks for adding us to this list. Thanks. And, uh, yeah. And then I guess uh, the next, uh, there are a couple other events here that uh, the, the IES uh, annual conference uh, in, in New Orleans is coming up and then the, the Shanghai Smart Home Technologies. If, if people are traveling, I don't think there'll be very many uh, on this call going to that one, but uh, we've participated in that one before in China. And uh, and then there's a green build as well that's uh, coming up later on in the year. And, uh, and then maybe uh, CD can say a few words about the, the upcoming CD Expo the end of September. It's coming up fast. Yeah, it really is. It's got actually quite a few events coming up, but I want to focus on the Expo. Um, CD Expo is uh, end of September the 29th, and cdexpo.com is the website to register. It's going to be that, I think for many people, that first time really back um, in full force, in-person, large-scale event. So we're excited about that. In addition, we have um, a continuing tech summit uh, scheduled uh, September 8th in Toronto, October 18th in Denver, November 1st in Irvine, November 3rd in Woodland Hills, California, December 6th in Tampa, Florida, and December 8th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And if it's okay, I'll just put the link to those tech summits in the chat if you want, if you didn't have a chance to write down those dates. Yeah, th thanks a lot. If you could send me an email with those uh, dates, I can add those to the minutes and we can send it off. Great, uh, awesome. After. Well. And Greg, we uh, we actually have a question from uh, Christina Summerfield, uh, who's asking, are there any speaker slots still available for the CEDIA Expo? I believe they're locked down. I think at this point, I hope they are with a month away, but there may be. Um, let me confirm that and get back to the Kaba folks and they can share that with the uh, follow-up material. Unless Giles or, or Walt... Uh, know if there's anything left i'm pretty sure they're locked down but we can yeah, double check I, I think they're locked down for this year but if you are interested in submitting for next year we would still love to uh, have your information okay yeah we'll go to the we'll go to the next slide so here's the the next meeting the the chc uh is uh tuesday november 22nd we try to put these uh fairly well in advance so we're looking for a, a, a keynote speaker if anyone on the call is is interested uh or knows of anyone who would be interested uh feel, feel free to reach out uh, to myself at walker at or or anyone for or marta as well from from cabba and then uh, we can get it uh, to work out the details 
And Greg, I, I, if you don't mind, I just want to um, mention uh, regarding the date, um, if there is anybody who is interested in a speaking spot, but you might not be available on this specific date, um, just let us know and we'll try and, and see if we can work around that. So although the date, we do try and keep it um, set, um, there is some movement um, if, uh, if it calls for it. All right. Thanks, Greg. Sorry about that. Yeah, good, good, good point. We they're, they're, they're somewhat tentative if you can work around the schedule. And Marta, this is David. I think we, we presented, uh, we suggested two topics. So I'll, I'll touch base with you uh, because they're related to the home and I'm actually That's right. on them at the PM Expo, which we can list. At the Perfect. Great. Thanks, David. Yes, let's touch base on that. Yeah, we'll bring all the topics forward to the to the to the chairs and the vice the chair and the vice chairs of the CHC. So uh, well, we're still looking for some new chairs, uh, a, a new chair and a, a couple new vice chairs, and uh, so it'll be a new group of individuals. And we'll be sharing. They'll be uh, vetting the uh, the upcoming uh, the keynote presentation just through email. Um, so we, we always bring it forward to them for the approval. Um, so it looks like we're fairly uh, we're a little bit early, but uh, that's always good. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll adjourn the meeting now. Uh, I know Charles had to step off, so he couldn't uh, chair the rest of the meeting. But uh, um, have, have a good rest of your day, everyone, and uh, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'll be uh, sharing the recording and the and the and the minutes when they're available.